Alright, one of the most challenging things about midsummer walleyes is they can be anywhere and everywhere. Five feet of water up on the inside of weed lines all the way out to 30 foot deep mud and rock. Where do you start? What do you use? I'm gonna run down through six baits and presentations that I have tied on when I'm heading to a lake and I don't know what to expect or where I'm gonna find walleyes. Obviously, number one on my list has gotta be a jig and wrap because it's so versatile for catching fish all over at different depths. And in the summertime, finally, you've got fish pushing out to that mid-lake, main lake structure, out off of the deep edges where they become graphable. It's so hard to graph fish up in the weeds, so when you get them on those deep humps, you know, deep weed lines, whatever, if you're running around, scanning, looking for fish, trying to figure out where they're at, you have to have one of these within an arm's reach because if you go over that pot of three, four fish, it's nothing to flip it out the back of the boat, put the motor in neutral, three, four rips, and you either have caught yourself a walleye or you keep going on to the next. If I had to choose one size, it'd probably be a number seven. It's kind of the best all around. And if I had to choose one color, this one catches big ends. My go-to color on Mille Lacs Lake, regular perch, green back, orange belly, Something about it catches big ones, can look like perch, can also shine where there's crayfish. If you wanna know a whole bunch more of info and tips on fishing a jig and wrap, I've done a bunch of videos on it. I'll link them in the description below and I'll stop blabbing and move on to the next one. Number two for me is gonna be a good old fashioned jig. This is a quarter ounce BMC hardball jig. Jigs catch fish in the spring, they catch fish in the fall. Most people put them away in the summertime. They catch fish all year round. And the nice thing is, it's so versatile. In the summertime, I'm either using a, a sucker minnow and pitching up in that cabbage and coontail mix, or if times are tough, and it's usually tough. <laughs> I'm throwing a half of a crawler on there, whether it's to the weeds, in 28 feet of water, vertical jigging. Whenever I need to get bit, and they are not touching anything else, stoop down to their level with a little half of a crawler on a jig head and you're golden. <laughs> Finally tricked one into bite and had to stoop down to their level. Little half of a crawler, whoa! Just on a quarter ounce hardhead jig, old school as it gets. I'll take it when times are tough. Definitely one of the least glamorous ways to catch a walleye. But anything that puts a fish in the boat, it's legal, I'm game for. Always donate the back half to the fish gods. The quarter ounce size is a great versatile size for summertime because you can fish it up on that shallow weed edge and fish it a little bit more aggressive, but it's heavy enough that in that deep water, you can float it down there in front of their face. And I'm a little bit different from other people. I don't like doing the kind of like the one foot jigging cadence everybody does. I do little hops like I'm fishing a Ned Rig basically, where I'm kind of hanging that bait in the water column and just feeling the lightest little bites, but sucker minnows up on the weed edge, that's where I get a little more ripping with it. Three, four foot sweeps and let that little three inch or four inch sucker minnow fall back down and you gotta put up with the pike, but you'll pull some walleyes out of there. Number three hurts me a little bit because I'm not a big troller. I don't enjoy it at all until I am reeling a fish in. I like hand-to-hand -hand combat and casting but it wouldn't be summertime walleyes without bottom bouncers. There's really no better way to cover water on those outside weed edges at about 1.3 miles per hour. And when I use this is when those fish are not grouped up enough to fish that jig and wrap. If it's not a pot of like four or five, six fish to cast at, and they're spread out, scattered along the edge, you send down a bottom bouncer, one to 1.3, don't even have to do anything. Put it in the rod holder and wait for that rod to load up and then reel in a fish. It's a great way to cover water, to find where they're congregated, and then deploy a different tactic. Number four is gonna keep the trolling train, the spinner train rolling, except for this is gonna be up shallow. So we're talking spinner rigs with little bullet weights instead of the big giant bottom bouncer. I'm using light bullet weights, anywhere from an eighth of an ounce to maybe a half and going up on shallow weed flats and the same idea as the bottom bouncer, what you're doing is you're covering ground, covering water. You don't know necessarily where a specific spot on the spot is, where then you'd be casting directly at it. So you might have a half mile long weed flat, nine to 10 foot cabbage or whatever. And what you're doing is just covering water, trying to get those walleyes to hop out, grab your bait. Then you turn back around and troll back over. And if you get bit again in the same spot, 
that's when you can start breaking it down but clutch for covering shallow weed water where you can't graft those walleyes you're not going to see them on side imaging in seven to nine foot thick weeds or even on down imaging or 2d you really have to fish those fish to find them that gets it done couple little bonus tips specifically for summertime the worst part about this technique is putting up with all the bluegills and perch nipping at the bait pulling off your bait so a couple things you can do go with the artificial on the back oh yeah baby dude i love it seriously i i know it's not right but i don't i don't want to be right like that and the power baits in like there's so oh, oh. I get it. You're moving this thing pretty fast, about a mile per hour. So they're not really getting to get a great look at it or you're not worried about them holding on to it. Like they're, it's a reaction bite, they're hopping up and eating it. So you can definitely get by with the fake stuff that little bluegills can't pluck off. Another thing that I'll do is use a, a half ounce tungsten weight. Like forever we would use tiny 16th, eighth ounce, quarter would be the heaviest size bullet weight to go through those weeds. And if you use a heavier like half ounce tungsten flipping weight for bass, you literally get down through that top layer of silver dollar bluegills that are always pecking at the surface and just waiting to grab a half of a crawler or a leech. You get down through those fish and get down to the walleyes. And you can also then pick up your trolling speed a little bit to help you know, keep them <laughs> playing chase versus pecking at your bait. <clears throat> Cut, action, take 47. <laughs> Number five is gonna be some sort of a snap jigging plastic setup, whether it is a paddle tail or a straight tail, and it's literally 50-50 on which is going to be better that day, and there's almost no way to figure that out until you get bit. <laughs> Walleyes make up their mind with one or the other, but basically it's, a reaction bite up in the weeds, up shallow, where you can't throw a jigging wrap. I would love to throw a jigging wrap past them. You're gonna have so many weeds on there instantly, it's just impossible. So, this straight tail, this is a, a Northland Impulse Smelt Minnow, super skinny bait, so it moves fast. I almost always run it on a quarter ounce VMC Moon Eye jig head, and it just darts really fast, and you snap it in basically big six foot rips like a hook set, let it crash back down, snap, crash and when you go to rip it you'll basically set the hook right into a fish or you'll be ripping it out of a weed and get bit on the next one and then some days they want that paddle tail the storm largo shad this one's a three inch they actually have a new three and a half inch size coming that i think is going to be dynamite this little three inch size it's a little bit bulkier plastic so i like upsizing my head slightly i believe this is a 5 16 ounce vmc hybrid jig head so this has got a really stout hook that old school round ball head but it's got a screw lock on the inside here so you're not going to have your plastic sliding down from you rip jigging them snap jigging them it's going to keep them pinched up tight basically until you catch enough fish that they bite the tail off and uh one little trick on these things you see that little tendon there if you want more action out of your bait pluck that tendon off you can even massage that tail just a little bit stretch it out then you'll get a little bit more action when you got hot water and you're moving that bait fast and i love these in shallow cabbage flats when i'm throwing on tips of points maybe there's edges of the flats or in pockets in the weeds but it's super versatile i mean you can throw it in eelgrass that uh sand grass coontail cabbage anywhere there's weeds and there's walleyes and there's bait one of these two options is going to catch them you can either go with the natural looking colors some days that electric chicken is just the deal as well but whether those fish are feeding on perch, bluegills, shiners, you're pretty much covered. Another great head is the VMC Boxer head. That one's a little bit beefier hook. I especially like those when I go with the big four inch Largo shad and I'm using heavier like 12 pound fluorocarbon leader and uh, braided mainline and really snapping out of thick heavy cabbage. It's a fun way to catch them but your arms are going to basically cramp up and fall off from doing this for six hours but i'm telling you as soon as you get that first reaction bite fish from snapping and there's a fish on there it is just addicting i want to go back to fishing <laughs> last but not least you knew it was coming deadly nedly 
My favorite all-around head, VMC Ned Rig head in the 3 16 ounce size. It's just a great all-around size, whether you're throwing in seven feet of water or earlier today we were out in 24 feet of water. And the reason for the Ned Rig, it's so versatile, you can fish it anywhere and everywhere and it can look like anything you want it to look like whether you want it to look like a perch feeding on bottom a crayfish a shiner a bug a leech and being able to throw it in shallow sand if you've got fish cruising that inside shallow weed line which you'd be surprised how many walleyes in the middle of summer will be up on that inside weed line feeding especially early in the mornings and it really complements how i was talking about snapping plastics rip jigging plastics this is exact opposite it's basically a do nothing bait, slow fall, fluttery, usually by bottom. With a 316 sounds head, even, even with a 316 sounds head, those plastics are buoyant, so it's falling about yay fast, and usually they'll hit it as soon as it hits bottom or catch it on the drop or as you start to drag it and I just do little six inch hops along bottom. It looks buggy, looks natural. It's really dumb looking, honestly, but they eat it and it's so simple not messing with live bait especially in the weeds it's that's the worst thing right every time you cast in the weeds you have to put a new shiner on there goes a dollar there goes a dollar there goes a dollar and you're just inefficient and this lets you cover water and it's i don't know you'll be shocked how many fish eat it uh, i can link down below as well and stop blabbing right now because i've put out videos specific to catching that rig walleyes that list sizes line all that good stuff i'll drop that below so those are just six presentations six baits that i have in my boat when i'm heading to a lake in the summer and i don't really quite know where those fish are going to be set up deep shallow in between or what they're feeding on those cover all the bases no matter what you can catch a walleye on your backyard lake with one of those techniques this summer Take a little, 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 like a little pungent little. Should have seen it in color. Do, 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 